Yes. Pyrex and microwave. I'm not shit. You probably think I'm baking cake when I'm working a whip. You probably think it's Pyrex. Uh, whole lot of shots followed after I bust your snot box with the Ciroc bottle. <laughs> Shoot the fair one, mono a mono the clown. Welcome to senior basketball analyst. As usual, it's the four stringer here. Uh, there's been a lot of NBA news today, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, obviously, Derrick Rose was injured. Uh, Iman Shumpert was injured uh, much more severely. and uh, But we have a good... Uh, John Wall is a good dude, man. And, it, you know... No, we don't do a lot of uh, personal discussion about players on this show because it really doesn't matter. What matters is their entertainment value and what, what they bring to the table when you watch the product. That's what really counts. We're not trying to have dinner with the guy. We, we're not trying to vet him to see if he, he's going to date our daughter. We, we're just watching the games, right? So we usually stick to that. But when I see something like this, I want to talk about it. So um, we, I, I, the news is everywhere. Where the, the but the place that I saw the um the place that I actually saw the story you know Yahoo News you know I'll I'll, I'll share it with you you know briefly uh, as as you can see there's there's the calf Shumpert he's out so you can see that right there but anyway with that said you know John Wall uh, Wizards John Wall donates 400k to DC homeless children's charity. And this is great. It's this place called uh, Bright Beginnings. And just look at the picture, man. John Wall, you know, doing things for the kids, man. You, you love that. You know, you love to see that. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, you know, just briefly about, you know, John Wall. Uh, you know, Wall is, is he's had kind of, he had a turbulent start to his career. You know, he had knee tendonitis and was sitting out games. And a lot of people were questioning his toughness. Um then once he was got on the court, people were questioning his, you know, basketball IQ because, um, you know, myself included, because he was just a guy that would just he, he was always trying to beat people with his tremendous athletic ability. And what he learned trial by fire is that you don't beat people with your tremendous athletic ability by always trying to outrun them and always trying to outjump them. You have to pick your spots. You know, you hit the accelerator, then you hesitate, and then you go, and then you explode to the rim. You know, when you can do things like that, that's what's going to, that is what has turned John Wall into a guy that is one of the leading assist men in the league. In fact, I think in, in, in total numbers, I think he has more assists in the last two years than any other player, even though he didn't lead the league in assists. Uh, John Wall has become an elite guard. He's elite. Uh, he's the, he's one of the top assist men in the league. We all know he can score. He's always been able to score. And he's also a great defender, you know, in, in a day and age where defense perimeter defense is not only difficult, it's something that people don't pay for. So you don't really have a lot of incentive to do it unless you just want to play the game the way it's supposed to be played. Then you care about defense. And uh, John Wall does all of that. And then it's also nice to see, uh, him going out and and doing something for you know the most vulnerable people in our society you know homeless children so this is just a wonderful story and I, I love to see a dude you know taking those riches that he's getting and this is a guy that you know had a rough upbringing um in terms of um you know his family's wealth he, they didn't have any uh you know they were poor and this guy you know once he makes good then he's reaching out to other poor people and trying to give him a hand up so you love to see that. But you know who doesn't love John Wall and who's always uh, has something stupid and terrible to say about him? Uh, Colin Cowherd, the guy that uh, Fox Sportsnet just paid all kinds of money to uh, bring him into the fold. And, uh, you know, and, and remember when ESPN tried to pretend like they cared that he was a racist when he'd been saying racist things the entire time he'd been at ESPN. But then he said something racist like right at once they knew he was leaving and then they suspended him like, Oh no, uh, we don't tolerate that at ESPN. Colin Cowherd doesn't offer anything other than racism. He doesn't offer anything other than stupidity. Now you say, well, no, he has this and he talks about sports. I mean, I got news for you. Colin Cowherd doesn't even watch the games. Now you can tell he doesn't watch the games from the things he says, but I know, I know from, uh, I guess that'd be third hand, 
I used to listen to before they canceled it or before Ryan Rossillo got a gig with Scott Van Pelt. He used to do what was called the ESPN NBA Today podcast. And uh, it was great. It was fantastic. It was one of the inspirations for me starting this uh, this show. But Ryan Rossillo said uh, he walked up to Colin Coward at a Boston Celtics game and said, hey, why did you say such and such about this player? He said, that didn't even make sense. And he said, and Colin Coward laughed and said, I don't watch these games. Who cares? I just say anything. And he was, and Ryan Rossillo said he was serious. He said, at first I thought he was kidding. He said, so, and he, he, and he, he said, so, you know, when you listen to Ryan, uh, to Colin Coward, I just know he doesn't watch the games. This man talks about sports for a living at the highest level of the um, sports media industry. And he doesn't even watch the games. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not here to talk about how bad he is at his job. We're here to talk about what a, a piece of garbage he is. So um, let's look at, since Colin Cowherd always has something nasty to say about John Wall or John Wall's dead father, let's see what Colin, Colin Cowherd has done for other people, right? Because don't get him confused. These journalists like to play this everyman routine. But a guy like Colin Cowherd is a multi-millionaire. He's got to be worth more than John Wall. He's been making millions of dollars for years. He's worth more than John Wall. He's got to be. Let's see what Colin Cowherd does for other people. Let's find out. So I did a couple of searches, and I just wanted to see legitimately what does he do. I said, okay, let me check Colin Cowherd donates. Well, let's see. Colin Cowherd to leave ESPN. Colin Cowherd to leave ESPN. Oh, look, John Wall donates because somebody said in the comments, hmm, I wonder what Colin Cowherd has to say about this. Look at that. Look at that. You find John Wall donating stuff when you're looking for Colin Cowherd. Oh, here's more of Colin Cowherd not donating anything. Hubbard Broadcasting donates. That's just something else on the page. Uh, Colin Cowherd invites you to blah, blah, blah. Oh, Unilever do donates soap. Yeah, thanks. Uh, man donates $10 million to poverty-stricken community. Ain't Colin Cowherd. Here's Colin Cowherd apologizing to Pe Pedro Martinez for racist comments. And it goes on and on like that. J trust me, do your own internet search. The dude is a piece of garbage. He doesn't do anything for anybody. So you know what? I did another search. I said, hey, let's try Colin Coward philanthropy. Let's try it out, right? Don't worry. More of the same. More of the same. More of the same. Oh, and him also saying terrible things and making other people uncomfortable. Yeah, Colin Coward, and this is this SB Nation uh, talking about Colin Coward and his stupid comments about John Wall's dad. And then and then the, they pointed out that it wasn't even a consistent argument because he praised Rajan Rondo, who had who also his father wasn't around. So what it he's not even consistent. But see, he doesn't know anything about Rajan Rondo's background. He doesn't care. Colin Coward just says stuff. And I wanted to highlight this because the guy, frankly, he's a disgrace. He's a disgrace. And I just wanted to highlight that for you. So um, the moral of the story is John Wall is out there uh, doing things for poor kids. And uh, it's really promising. And I hope to see more of that from him because, you know, hey, these billionaires aren't going to do anything for anybody, man. We need people like John Wall that can give a hand up to, to the most vulnerable members of our society. We need that. And I'm glad that John Wall stepped out and is doing that very early on in his career and early on in him having some wealth to give. So that's good. Um, now on to the injuries. Oh, oh boy. Look, you know what? Not going to get into any of the stupid stuff. Uh, anybody that knows anything about basketball at all, if you just watch basketball, uh, guys catch an elbow to the orbital bone, breaks. That's the way it is. Happens all the time. It's just not that strong. It's just not that, it's not that, they're not that thick. They're not that strong. The orbital bones just aren't. Orbital bones break during boxing matches where the guys are wearing pretty thick gloves. Orbital bones just break. So if you catch an elbow, especially an elbow from a big guy, man, it could implode your face, man. And, uh, you know, 
there's a lot of people, oh, uh, John Wall's made a, gl- uh, or not John Wall, I'm sorry, Derrick Rose made a glass, Derrick Rose, you know, Russell West- Westbrook, who may be a cyborg, he just got his face broken. Now, he broke it on someone's knee, I believe, but faces break, man, when they get hit. That's why so many players playing masks um, throughout the course of the year, because they're coming back from injury, and they need to wear a mask to protect their face. That happens all the time. Noses break, orbital bones break, they break. Um, so Derrick Rose, for those of you who don't know the story yet, Derrick Rose was uh, injured in – I think the very first like formal practice um, under coach Fred Hoiberg, he catches an elbow from, I couldn't find the name of the forward who hit him with the elbow, but it said a forward hit him with the elbow. Um, You know, I was reading this, I was reading this story um, in the, you know, local paper here, the Chicago Tribune, Derrick Rose catches the elbow from a forward. Um, And frankly, these injuries, there's kind of a long span. You know, some guys are out a month. Some guys are out a couple of weeks. My, my, I expect Derek to be back any, any time between two to four weeks. He'll be back with a mask on and, you know, and that'll be that. Um, obviously, I'd be remiss, especially since I did a video on this earlier. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the, uh, his comments about his accuser. And, um, you know, he's basically saying it's just not true. And, that was, and then he said something silly about using it as fuel for the games or whatever. You know, who cares? I, I don't, I don't care that he said that, and I don't care that it sounded kind of silly. I don't care. I also don't care about getting this man's pockets and saying, "Oh, how dare he say that he needs to make money for his family?" Well, what is he making it for then? That's the most uncontroversial statement. Look, we literally have, we literally have the Republican front runner, the people that run the country are trying to get elected a guy who does almost nothing but brag about his money. And who are the other, and who are the other people that could potentially be president? Uh, Ben Carson. um, I I don't know what can be said about this guy. You know, any black man that supports the federal flag, I mean, it's just pathetic. I don't know what else you can say about this guy. And obviously he's constitutionally challenged where he doesn't understand article six. We get it, but he's a millionaire. We got a failed CEO with the golden parachute and Carly Fiorina, millionaire. There's another front runner. And then Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush, mister, has never earned anything in his entire life. Why is it okay for all of these people to be insanely wealthy and have generational wealth, except in the case of Ben Carson, have generational wealth? People like Trump, Trump inherited all kinds of money and business connections. Don't forget about that. Why is it bad that Derrick Rose wants to earn money? Because it's because it's BS. That's why. So I'm not. I'm also not going to criticize him for that. Who cares, right? Um, what I will say is this about um, the sexual assault allegations. I don't understand. I shouldn't say I don't understand. I do understand. Law enforcement has no interest in prosecuting these kind of cases. None. Like, how can a woman give a deposition and file a a civil lawsuit with this detailed account of what happened to her? And law enforcement in California isn't even investigating it. It's like it didn't happen. and, And I mean by it didn't happen. I mean by it's like she never came forward with her story. How can they not? Do you know law enforcement? Look it up. Law enforcement is literally hanging pedophilia charges and not pedophilia i'm sorry uh child pornography charges on teenagers that have pictures of themselves on their phones i read the other day about a case a kid being charged as an adult for this crime which is a logical fallacy he wouldn't it wouldn't be a crime if he wasn't a kid so how can he be charged as an adult don't worry law enforcement is right on time with that but in this case, with Derrick Rose, are they even investigating it? I don't know. Nobody knows. Actually, we do know. They're not investigating it. Let's just admit it. They're not investigating it. You saw what these clowns did with the with the, with the Patrick Kane case. There's DNA in a bite. No one cares. And, and this, this, the clown DA goes and does that just 
foolish press conference. And he's basically blaming the case. He's like, ah, I can't prosecute now. This old lady stopped me. All right, dude. Well, you know what? Then I guess we're in anarchy then. If an old lady can stop you from prosecuting a crime, I don't know what to tell you, dude. If you can't do your job better than that, I don't know what to say. So those are my thoughts on on the, the Derrick Rose uh, injury and the Derrick Rose controversy. Um, and I say it's a controversy. I don't mean to diminish it. You know who's diminishing it? Society. Because no prosecution, no investigation, no nothing. Now, I'm in Shumpert, finally. Oh, I'm in. I'm in Shumpert reportedly, and this is according to um, ESPN, um, and and this is these are statements. A lot of a, a lot of the sources, the sources for these statements are um, Cleveland Cavaliers general manager David Griffin. I'm in Shumpert. Went to catch a lob. Hit his hit his wrist on the rim, which you know I'm actually surprised more rim related injuries don't happen because I mean the rim is you know obviously it's 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 hard so. I'm surprised more injuries don't happen on the rim, um, more serious injuries. Cause you know, we, we've all like banged our hands on the rim and then like, you know, you'll, a lot of times you'll be bruised right here. You'll have bruises here. Like usually you got calluses here, so you don't get bruised. But a lot of times you get bruised here. Like, you know, if you, if you dunk the ball too hard or, or a lot of times if you miss a dunk, a lot of times you'll, you'll catch the rim funny and you won't grab it right. You'll hit your hand and you'll bruise your hand here. So, you know, but I'm surprised people don't have more serious injuries, you know, on the rim. Regardless, uh, Shumpert ruptured his extensor carpi ulnaris sheath. Forgive me if I didn't pronounce that right because I'm not a doctor. Um, basically, he busted his wrist. <laughs> uh, they, they, they called it later a tendon, and he was having a lot of soreness. So he goes, has an MRI done. They found out, find out things ruptured. He is going to be out for um at least three months this is a shame it's a shame because what we wanted to see what we wanted to see from uh from shumpert and, and from the cleveland cavaliers is we wanted to see what the roster would look like full strength it's bad enough that tristan thompson is in the middle of the um um is in the middle of contract negotiations by the way cleveland pay the man whatever to do just pay him and just pay him luxury tech who cares you're trying to win a championship do you want to win or do you want to lose do you want to go to jail or you want to go home to quote training day like why are you why are you fooling around with this and just pay the man to get to keep it moving like it's it's silly it's silly for these it's silly when you have these multi-billionaires arguing over a couple million here a couple million there It'd be like if somebody like if you were sitting there haggling over five dollars, like would you really do that? Like let's say you were having some work done in your house or something, and it was five dollars. It's like man, the, the guy says, "Hey, uh, it, this costs you know five hundred sixty dollars to have it done." What if it costs five fifty five? And he's sitting there like, "Why are we arguing over five dollars?" Somebody pay this man and get him back to work. But back to Stumper. Uh, Sean, it's just, man, it just seems like it's always something, man. He hurt his shoulder in the playoffs. We remember when he, uh, had the horrific knee injury a couple years back. It just seems like it's always something. And it doesn't, and it just seems like that. It's not really always something really with professional athletes. It is always something they're breaking their bodies up out there and they get injured. That's just the way it is. But you really wanted to kind of see this team come into, uh, come and start the season with its you know full roster uh what they will probably do is uh they'll probably just move somebody that's not really a rotation player into the starting lineup and leave J.R. Smith on the bench it seems to be the thing that's done lately to keep the rotation more stable so instead of moving two people two having two moving parts you just have one keep Shump on the bench um or keep J.R. Smith on the bench where he's used to playing uh you know i like shump a lot um he's he's obviously not a scorer but i see him as a future tony allen i see him as being he's already a really good defender but i see him as being a future you know kind of transcendent defender i see him as being a guy who could potentially be one of the best defenders of his era 
uh, that's what I hope will will go on for Shumpert. But um, supposedly, and, and Griffin was talking about how hard he worked in the offseason, we got to see a consistent jump shot out of Ime Shumpert. We really do. We really want to see that. And, and the, no other reason is shooting open jump shots just isn't difficult, man. It's just not difficult. Regular people hit open jump shots. It's not difficult. So when I see Shump, you know, missing a lot of open 18 footers, it, it frustrates me because I know if he just put one one hard off season in, all of those woes would go away. And it's not that I don't think he works hard. I think he's not working on the right things. And I was interested to see how he was going to come into this season, given that now he's a vet and he's had a lot of injury problems. So he's had a lot of messed up off seasons. This off season, he was going to be able, I thought he was going to be healthy and he was going to be able to maybe come back with some new um, arrows in his quiver. So um, I'm in Shumpert is, is going to be out for three months. The, the, the only good news here is that um, he has plenty of time to get his rhythm back for the playoffs. That's the, the, the other than that, this is just a mess. You, you just hate to see it. You want to see these guys when you're a fan of the NBA, like I know you are, you want to see these guys full strength and playing well. You don't want to see guys getting hurt. You don't want to see teams like that night, that season we went through with the Oklahoma City Thunder with Kevin Durant. That was awful. It was awful with Durant. He, he has a foot injury. He sits all that time. Then he finally comes back. Then he re-injures it. And then he's done. It, it's just frustrating. It's because you want to see these teams full strength. You want it to be like a video game, man, where everybody's roster is full strength and everybody gets to, uh, and we get to actually see who is the best when everybody can bring all of their uh, players to uh, to the arena suited up, ready to go. So uh, that's the injury roundup so far. Uh, to recap, Derrick Rose, he's probably going to be out, you know, anywhere from two to four weeks. Broken orbital bone in his face. Uh, great. Uh, and, and, about, and, and one more thing about Derrick Rose. For all you people on the Internet, you know, talking so silly and doing your usual. You know, the elbow, that elbow that elbow would put you in a coma, man. Like, have you ever, like, seen Derrick Rose? Like, just stop acting like you're so tough and Derrick Rose is so soft. Stop doing that. That's so dumb. That is so dumb. Have you ever seen Derrick Rose? Have you seen his neighborhood? I got family that lives there. You wouldn't walk through there. <laughs> so stop it. Stop typing and acting like you're tough because you're typing on a computer. That's silly. Don't do that. You sound like an idiot. Sound like an idiot. You were the guy that wasn't even good enough to start on your high school team, but somehow Derrick Rose is a sucker. You know who you were? You were the guy that Derrick Rose dunks on. Actually, you wouldn't have been in the game. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and, and I'm in Shumpert. He's out for uh, at least three months. Um, ruptured tendon, for lack of a better description. Ruptured tendon in his wrist. So, uh Obviously, we wish both of those guys well. We want them to be back on the court, um, you know, unless, of course, the Rose thing is true. And then and that also obviously complicates things. So with that said, you know, this is a senior basketball analyst. You know, hit that thumbs up, like us, subscribe, you know, check us out on Twitter, SBA 4 stream. That's at SBA 4 th S T R I N G. So check us out, man. If you like it, you know, keep supporting us and we'll keep bringing you, you know, we'll keep bringing you the facts. So do the knowledge. Oh, yes. Sean Carter is nice, but Sean Price is the best. Sean gone. No Sean Dawn. Sean is a dawn. I don't.